Welcome back to another Hockey Nation live show with the hockey coach, Global Coach Francis, directly for the beautiful country of Thailand. What an amazing, great Thursday night, uh, April 18, 2024. And we have a co host uh, tonight, uh, directly from Toronto, and the Cayman religion, the man of the men, uh, Mr. Enoch Tap, is back in the house. Hello, Coach. Hello, Hockey Nation. Are we ready for the playoffs? Here we go. That's Sounds what the subject good. of the night, the playoff prediction, NHL Eastern Conference. And I want to see the matchup between both teams are going to face on the round number one on the Eastern Conference, like I mentioned, each one, uh, uh, like I mentioned to you. And then we're going to talk about Montreal Canadiens, a couple of news. Of course, we're going to continue to deliver continents about the Montreal Canadiens. And then to finally, at the end, we're going to give you all the predictions we expect could happen on the Eastern Conference. But what about the Western Conference? Because we don't know yet who's going to be, to be, uh, to play. Again the, the again the Edmonton example and uh, maybe and the LA. the Dallas Star. So at the end of the night, uh, we're going to do the Western Conference and it's gonna be Marco Larabi is going to join me live tomorrow night. Uh, maybe we're going to follow the game Laval Rocket before that. So we are still not sure, but Marco Larabi is going to join me live tomorrow night to talk about the Western Conference. So we're not going to forget the Western Conference. Uh, we just have to wait twenty four hours. And if you want to join the hockey nation, the Cap Nation podcast uh, uh, bracket NHL, but let's just go put the, the link uh, of this bracket that uh, you can join us. Uh, I don't know how many people we have right now, but uh, uh, you can join and then we, it's easy. It's a one run at a time and you have to fin find out this bracket with the winner of the Stanley Cup 2024. So um, this is the beginning of the top of the but first of all, this is the end of season and NHL tonight, but the beginning of the season number two. Uh, when you talk about that's the right. NHL calendar, uh, because that's the playoff, everybody will restart at zero W, zero loss. Uh, and now this is a new season for 16 teams are going to battle and uh, fight for the only one Stanley Cup at the end of the playoff. Uh, it could be in June. A couple of days before the NHL draft uh, this year is in Vegas. Uh, and... Uh, would be interesting to follow uh, from this weekend. The first game is happening Saturday, guys. And then uh, the final um, calendar schedule of the players is going to be out released by the NHL. One, you will know exactly what's going on with Vegas and the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, Two team battle for the spot number three on the Pacific Division. So, uh, before we welcome everybody, I would like to uh, welcome you back, uh, first of all. And then uh, tell us what you, ex you know, how you your vibes uh, about the playoff at 2024. Well, thank you, Coach, for having me and hosting this uh, uh, playoff prediction. As, as we know, hockey, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, has probably the best playoff structure in all of sports. Uh, it's the most exciting, especially the, the first couple of rounds. Um, it's it's going to be exciting. There's teams that have played and there's tradition and they know each other very well that have played over the past uh, years. Uh, and then there's new matchups as well this year that'll be quite interesting. So, and and still to the 82nd game in, in the West, we still don't know whether uh, LA or, or Vegas will finish uh, above each other and who the, who the meet up with in the, in the first round. So, um, it's going to be exciting either way, uh, something to look forward to. It's going to be a, a challenge of the fittest. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you know, it's another kind of excitement for us as a Montreal Canadian fans, the Blue Band Rouge. Uh, you know, we miss, we miss uh, those uh, years uh, with the participation in the playoff, uh, but hopefully it could happen the next uh, two seasons with the Montreal Canadian. But the people already been, and uh, there last season, and they returned this year. This is a good news uh, for them. And then, you know, it's like I said, the, you restart at zero. You are the case number one, and everything could happen. Mr. Tap, injury could be a factor. So, and then one player Maybe. could make an impact on specific team to push that team all the way. Who predicted last year the Florida Panthers, Mr. Tap, is going to go all the way to the end? I did not. And many of us did not see the Florida Panthers. Who's going to be that team? 
the Cinderella of the tournament of the playoff at 2024, like the Saint Louis Blues a couple of years ago. Battle Star have a good push. The Montreal Canadiens a uh, good push. Uh, what about the biggest go tonight? Got the Stanley Cup uh, winner. Before that was the Canada Avalanche. So I can go all the way about that. Uh, and then tomorrow night, guys, I want to open the door. Uh, we're going to go, uh, Mr. Natap, uh, <clears throat> Back in the Future. Is it Back in the Future, the movie? And he was like, Back in the yes. Future? Yes. So we're going to go back in the future with Marco Larabi, Mr. Nartap. Uh, when he was born, he was uh, just kidding, just kidding. He was not <laughs> born. But he was born when this happening, Mr. Nartap. But we're going to talk about tomorrow night, Mr. Nartap. 40 years ago, April 20. Tomorrow is the 19th and the 20. We do the game play by play, so I'm going to skip that. We're going to talk about this tomorrow night. Uh, 20, 40 years ago, Mr. Nartap, what happening on uh, Friday, April 20, 1984? He was the big, the, the big bra between the Montreal Canadiens and the Quebec Nordic. So I'm prepared some kind of clips, everything like that. I'm going to talk about this. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to make a video about this uh, um, big uh, game. Uh, game number six, by the way, uh, between both teams. And uh, some of you uh, was born. Uh, me, I was uh, on my... Uh, on my best time in my life at that time, what happening about this? But uh, uh, yeah, so um, you know, we're gonna talk about that game tomorrow yeah. night. Uh, so don't miss, uh, don't miss it. I think it will be a good subject to bring back uh, some memories for some uh, people in the chat, Mr. Nartap. I'll be talking about the chat, uh, people. Uh, Mr. Nartap, we're going to welcome a, a few people. Gary Cooley you know. is in the house uh, tonight. Gary, of course, uh, the Maybe. remote runner. Welcome back, Gary. Vinny, 007, uh, notre ami. James is in the house. What about Randy Walkman from Alberta is in the house. What about the Nicola de Gobi? Bon, no. Welcome back, uh, Nicola. Thank you so much. De la belle région de Sherbrooke. Uh, uh, then we have uh, Ron with Kings. Moderator number one knocked the door tonight. Uh, Ron, thanks to be with our Canadian show. Uh, we have we Joseph Laham, Mr. Nartap. Rosette Laham, he is in the house directly from Houston, Texas. A big friend of the New Jersey Devils. Now he has to relax more because he knows the Devils are not going to be in the playoff for, say, for his team. Joseph, hopefully everything looks better for you and your family. You want to let you know the Hockey Nation, I show the Ad Nation family. Always missing you, my friend. Joseph has been with us, Mr. Natap, for years at the yeah. beginning of the channel and he's always been a great supporter of the Hockey Nation. Of course, late sometime, you know, family is not the yeah. most uh, matter and uh, we wish the best for him for sure. Now we have to go all the way for RJ Calabro, Mr. Natap, with all the updates car, uh, on the scoreboard. The Wild and the Kraken 1 1, the Canucks, the Jet 1 1 after 1. For the Canucks, Mr. Natap, uh, Danko is back in the house. Uh, the main man. Pipe, uh, Gary Upset is making for the playoff. Uh, the Sharks is in the house uh, tonight. Uh, here we go. Uh, Sharks are now joining six. And everything could happen. And so you can write them out of the first round. Uh, Run, talk about the lesson. Kings already out. Uh, uh, the Jet take the lead now 2 1, Mr. Uh, Nartap. Uh, Marco Larabi is in the house tonight. Uh, welcome back, Marco. Go, Jets, go. Uh, hey, Alexandre Maillard, notre ami Alexandre Maillard, Mr. Nartap, is in the house uh, tonight. Uh, him, I'm sure he's going to sharing for the Colorado Avalanche, Mr. Nartap. He probably is, but that's that's a good team to go with. Awesome. We're doing good, uh, Vinny. Thanks again. I was 50 then, uh, Randy. I was listening to my <laughs> Zoran Zoran uh, tape. Uh, Wild play at the in 1984. Here we go. That's the way to do that. Uh, you are welcome, Joseph. A great Richard, Mr. Natap. Knock the door for the so another no. big supporter of the Hockey Nation. I'll show Mr. Natap. But directly from Ottawa, welcome. Canada. Don't forget, guys, to click on the like. That'd be awesome. We appreciate that. The subject of the night, Mr. Natap, the NHL playoff matchup prediction. And they are not like a matchup uh, logo between. I just put you the, the eight team going to compete uh, for the playoff 2024 on the Eastern Conference. We're going to talk about this. You did not miss it if you follow the Ad Nation uh, um, Daily News. Uh, today we talk about my MVP of the season for the Motor Canadian. I go with Nick Suzuki about that. And then if you follow me on my other channel, uh, this is the time, Mr. Yes. Uh, today. 
This is the biggest day of the day, Mr. Tap. I'm going to be on the water okay. for the next five hours, Mr. Tap, today. Um, all the plan is up uh, with that trend location to go. And you have a, a, a foam contest, Mr. Tap. I don't know. They have some kind of gun and the, the gun and they shoot foam all around the people. Uh, interesting about that. So going to, they block the Beach Street, Pattaya. For the walking street all the way to soy six i'm going to walk this uh, two time get some video and uh, it's a is this so is good. the this is the day it's not up you have to go there and uh, we are set up uh, to it's get the biggest day yeah yeah it's the purge it's the beginning it's the of purge. summer it's not this is a new year in uh, italian is the beginning of the summer right now so they have only three seasons. Now it's getting going to get hot, hot, hot. It's about 92, 93 Fahrenheit right now. So I don't know. It's like, what, 35, 36 Celsius right now. Uh, it's a time to get the wet, the soaking wet the, at the end of the day. Why not? We get blessing so, and everything. Maurice Rabiam is on tap. He's in the house. Maurice is in Chai Mai. <laughs> I don't know. He's still there, Mr. Tap. Uh, Chai Mai and Thailand. Maurice, uh, another big fan, supporter of the Hockey Nation Show and the Montreal Canadiens. Maurice Rabiel, good to back home. Oh, he's back home. Here we go. I did not read the next one. Oh, uh, he's at the south uh, on the Phuket area, Mr. Tap, uh, south of me. And uh, Bolroy is uh, north of me. So I'm in the middle about everything about that, Mr. Tap. So uh, that's happening. Um, on this, make sure you put your phone. Uh, yes, uh, Maurice. Uh, I all set. I'm all set, Mr. Uh, Maurice. Uh, have the water gun, the video on. And then I have the, <laughs> the protectors. Is it's it a, the hidden? I don't have it. It's Is it the there. hidden It's a protector so not tap for your phone. Um, a protector. Is it the hidden thing, camera? Tap is pretty good, Mr. Tap. You, like, you put this on your phone. It's a plastic cover, plastic. And you can recording. Yeah. You can use oh, your cool. phone. Like It's pretty good to do that. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Sounds, Here we go, Mr. Tap. Like That's what we got at the beginning of the show. So I don't know. We have we're going to start with the month in the news. If you don't mind, are you all great with me, Mr. Tap? Let's do it. The big news of the day, Mr. Tap, it was the month Canadian with the W of the Phoenix Coyotes uh, uh, with the W over the Oilers for the score 5 to 2. That pushed the month Canadian now to be fifth uh, and the uh, uh, NHL overall pick, uh, uh, NHL uh, draft 2024, 28 in the standing. And what happening, Mr. Tap? It's not guaranteed to get number five at the end of the day, Mr. Tap. The good news no. and the bad news. The good news, guys, you can get 8.5% uh, approximately to get number one and number two. They have 25% they can stay at number five. And then they have 44% they can drop at uh, six. A six and then 14 percent it can drop a seven so the worst is seven and the best and number one and you see the the probabilities mr tap other yeah. motor canadian pick they keep their number five last season Mr. not that he did not have any team and uh, move on uh or move up uh at the nhl draft 2023 uh, last season and nhl so we'll see what happening mr tap uh, for the motor canadian but this is a good news what do you how are you feeling about that? Well, I, I think I'll feel a lot better once they start unveiling the teams in order from uh, last to first. Because as soon as you get through number seven and number six and they haven't called out Montreal, the, it, it's only good news from there, right? You know, that means you'll either maintain that fifth or, or you're lucky enough to get first or second. So uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, hopefully it doesn't fall back. But... As we said before, with with the uh, large amount of defensemen, especially right-handed defensemen that are available this year, I think at fifth or even sixth, you might get a, a very good forward at that at that position as well. So we keep our fingers crossed until that day. Yeah, absolutely. Which, about by that. the way, should be after after the first round. They usually do it after the first round of the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry again. They usually do it after the first round of the playoffs, the uh, uh, ranking, the order for the... Why do you consist about, is, a sec, uh, is a after the, the second round? 
So uh, oh, the orders round. stay okay. until the second round, and then after that, round number three. So the four team, um, the four team uh, go all the way to the final. After that, right? Um, yeah. They are 20, uh, 32, 31, 30, and 29. So uh, if you are 22 right now and you go to final conference, now you drop from 22 to 29. So Montreal Canadiens, I believe right now, they are going to be 25th for the Winnipeg Jet, 26? I think so. They're around there, yeah. So yeah. It, it's not like a big jump. It's not a top for 26 to 29 um, at the end yeah. of the day. So uh would be uh we'll see what I could have been for sure on that one and then with that pick Mr. tap it will see five six seven um for sure we want to welcome back Mr. Gary thanks so much to be with us uh, about this uh Marco uh one is a draft lottery again May six seven yeah, that's... um there you go um I think so that, would, seven, eight, that would be five. after I'm sorry so that would be after the, that would be after the first round then Oh, the the initial draft. Yeah, I think it is after the first yeah, round. Yeah, I apologize. I thought you asking me a question about the standing, the move the team can move from. Uh, oh, okay. And yeah, the standing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, gotcha. uh, it's a May seven eight. I apologize so that uh, if I didn't get your question right okay. correctly about no, that. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so now the player Mister Tab could be available for the Montreal Canadiens, not a number one, number two. But more like number five, six, seven. It's going to be Langstrom, Captain, Azerman as a forward. I exclude guys Dimitrov. I'll be shocked if Montreal can Dimitrov. <laughs> uh, I'll be shocked. So I took Dimitrov out. Not because I don't want them to draft him. It's more about the probability to get him is really low, in my opinion. Then you have the, goal, the, the defense middle guy, Red Shinov, uh, Parek, and uh, Yat Renchak. But what about Dickinson, uh, Saliev, and and Saliev. what happened in the third tap? I remove all the left defensemen on, on this uh, tonight. So it's only right defensemen and the forward. This is what I believe Montreal Canadiens are going to get that, that selection. And uh, who else uh, links from where he can be out? Captain Ezerman uh, could be there. Can we talk about Amnesias? Uh, why again, La? But I'm going to surprise everybody, guys. Iguala is not going to be under the radar for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, I don't think he's a number five at the, at the NHL draft 2025, at uh, 24, Mr. Nostap. I look everything, I still believe he's still, like, I, they have better, when I say better players, you have more skilled and talented players at number five to go with Iguala. I think Iguala, he can go to the flood, uh, to the flames if they want him. If not, he's going to be out of the top 10 Mr. In, in the top, in my opinion. I know the vibes mm. is about him, but if you look deeper about the clip of other players, guys, it's he's one back step back. You like his energy, you like his name, his DNA. I understand that, but it reminds me of the top. The Ryan Leonard uh, pick last season for the Montreal Canadian. The Montreal Canadian have a lot of Which friends want uh, Leonard, and the Montreal changed his direction. And uh, at the end of the day, Mr. Tap is going to be the dis- the final decision is going to be the interview and the feeling of the character of the players. Why we cannot have that kind of formation? Does it make sense? Of course, yeah. And this That's is what why I believe it could years. be a problem for us to try to find the right players, right? We don't know their personalities and how they react. Like, Yakim Chuck guy is quiet. Like, I know that. I read about him today. He's a guy does not talk. Quiet, quiet, quiet. But is that the, the guy is could become a Puritan Jello and NHL Mr. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's very possible. I mean, uh, it's go ahead. It's still in the in the work. It's still in the workings. I think in terms of what direction they're going to go. I don't. I, I think they have ideas of, of where they might be headed, but it'll depend on obviously where where they finish in the lottery. Number one, number two. Uh, if they're not number one or number two, then what are the teams in front of them going to do? 
and uh, they're going to go from from there. But I, I don't know. I, I have a slightly more inflated uh, vision of Iginla. I, I think he can probably crack, uh, I'd say, seven, eight, or nine in in that area in terms of uh, the draft. So we'll wait and see. Uh, but but you might be right. I'm gonna I'm gonna obviously do some more research and try to look at some some further highlights of their play. Um, it, it's interesting the playoffs how those have unfolded and how they performed because that will uh, mean a lot in terms of how they are ranked and waiting for those final rankings that we get uh, uh, will mean a lot, especially the, the McKenzie one. Yeah, I'm sorry about this. So we'll see what happening also like uh, and after, uh, Randy said number 10 and then you have um, Abinition said number 9 and then I have to tell her about have a good day. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't get wet. Don't get wet. <laughs> <laughs> She's in front of me, like. So, um, anyhow, um, yes, and, and, and again, you sit out, guys. The U the U eighteen start in one week. Yes. Uh, to follow, guys, if you like hockey and all, U uh, eighteen start in one week, and then you have the Merrill Cup. Some of them is going to be there. So we have a couple of things you can change a little bit the stock until they go to the to the rookie cam uh, or the NHL uh, combine and Buffalo again this year. So, uh, but you guys, you write Randy Abination and you about Igela on that uh, on that uh, area about that brand new isn't out, Mr. Uh Should be an entertaining playoff. Uh, just as long as Vegas get beat, uh, <laughs> brand new. Welcome in the house. Welcome back, by the way. <laughs> I like uh, his playoff point. I've been I'm going to move down to take him. They have a guy in mind. We'll not see about this. Uh, I leave out the draft a captain after the comments about wanting to be bigger about this. This is the yeah, guy, guys. True. I I'm can going see to that. Shock everyone right there. If you look about this, Mr. Tap, this is the this is the guy I said it. I know, but they got to get bigger, Coach. I I, I agree. Talent-wise, he's probably above all the other names that we mentioned earlier, including Iserman. But y you know what? Like you look at the the prospects we have. Um, the you know the biggest guy I believe probably is Roy at six feet. So especially for playoff time, like I think the wingers we got to get a little bit of size in there. So we'll, and and that seems to be how they were leaning in the, in that press conference that they had yes or two days ago uh both Hughes and Gordon it, they seemed to lead us in that direction that they were all things being equal they were going to go with size before they went with uh, uh another smaller player you know <coughs> but you might be right it's it's who knows right i who think the better player is thanks from or captain oh i i probably say Catton has more skills uh, than, than Lindstrom, but I think Lindstrom is more of a complete player, and he's also got the size. So what happened in the top, the easy way to say that is Logan Coley versus Quinfield. And I think Quinfield is a little bit better at Lindstrom overall. The yeah, I would not disagree with that. is a little bit better at Quinfield, but Quinfield was a little bit more talented at the same age versus Langstrom. That's the trend between the both of them. And captain for me is a Logan Coley uh, for the Montreal Canadian. So if you want to add a guy can add uh, 80 point with Kirby Doc, this is a guy you're looking for, Mr. Natap, is captain in my opinion. His character, the way he behavior, this is the guy is over a uh, Cole Azerman in my opinion. Langstrom is for me, it will be picked because his size make a big impact about that. But now, some put him at the top, some put them now on uh, lower, and they put all the defensemen on the top in front of him. Like Lechenov, Parek, Yarenchuk, Dickinson, and Zaliev. So some forwards going down more because of that situation. Can I try to go with the right defenseman? Could happen. They could. Could yeah, 
Uh, that's always a possibility. But now you see what you've done, Coach. You've made you made our friend Marco very, very upset. <laughs> I still think it's between the comment as a man. Too bad, like someone be at U18, Marco said. <laughs> no, he says, I can't believe it, Coach. You didn't you didn't want Benson last year because of the size, and now you want Catton. And <laughs> um, it's all about what you that's have in true. front of you, right? I can, I can attest that. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, all that's true. Too. What you have in front of you. My first pick, guys, I apologize for everybody, but is Let's you know. <laughs> This is what I I always love Let's you know, Mr. Tap. I know what Perek can do. I know uh, Yak can shot, he can do. But I say, like, Yak can shot, Mr. Tap is going to be a mix of Rebecca and Mayu together as a. A uh, 1B, two pairing defenseman. I see more a uh, Led Chenov uh, can do become the Mike. And uh, now I'm going to get slammed right now. I'm going to say that. On the Mike <laughs> Medicine, but a good with Mike Medicine, Mr. Natap. The guy can carry on the puck, can move the puck very well. I know he's six foot, but this is the kind of player you can get as a quarterback, uh, not only on power play, but also on the, on the game. Uh, like John Carlson example, I would give an example. This is the kind of listener you get. Uh, you can get with him. Uh, Young Kenshot, uh, Young Kenshot is more like uh, the Peter Angelo prototype of the players uh, in the NHL. Now, can he reach that ceiling? Yeah. I don't know, but at least he can become a solid player. At the end of the day, Mr. Tap, whoever they pick, the player is going to be a good fit in the future with the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, I agreed with that. I, I don't disagree. It's just, like I said, the only thing I would like to see is more size. I think it would benefit us more, all things being equal, of course. I agree with you. KLS is in the house. It's on top. And we have Nike X is in the house. Welcome to the house. I think and Nike X is the first time. Welcome to the family. Welcome. Eisenman would play right away. Uh, no, uh, he have a contract. Uh, he is an NSA Boston College. Uh, uh, I apologize with Boston in the same combination. That make Mr. Tab. Do you think Celebrini return or he stay Boston University? I, I I don't think he returns. He doesn't have anything else left to prove there. To be totally honest, uh, I go with a bold prediction, Mr. Tab, he's, he's on that one. NHL he will ready. see one more year in Boston University. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know if that really benefits him, Coach. I'll be honest with you. And I, I understand. Uh, I mean, he's... What, go ahead. What's his birthday? What's his go. birthday? June 15, I believe. Yeah. Oh, 15. Okay. So what is the, mm, what's the problem with that, Mr. Tap? He's really young. He's only almost 17. He's young, he's, yeah. Right? Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. You got a point there. Who is his best friend, Mr. Natap? His best friend. I don't know. Cole Iserman. Oh, Iserman? Yes. Who's his best friend? His best friends. You I mean put Cole a He was born two days ago. His brother was born June 15. Just kidding. But he was June 13, <laughs> Mr. Natap. <laughs> About that. Um, You're confusing me, coach. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Born in Vancouver, British Columbia, by the way. Uh, he's really close mm -hmm. um, with Cole Eiserman. And the reason Eiserman signed with Boston University is because the city Brené attached. And I feel like that could help being city Brené to see one more year. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, and next year, the Boston University is going to be like the Boston College this year. Like, they're going to be a really good team. Uh, on the paper, they're going to have a better team at compared to Boston uh, College because some, some player left. Will Smith left. Carter Coach is going to left. We're still waiting for Leonard and uh, Perro. Uh, so, um, but they still have a good team. Uh, David Letourneau is going to play with Boston College. The team will be good. But I think that slightly, if we see Brini stay with there, I think it's going to be um, Edge. Boston University. Uh, next season, yeah. uh, we have Tony Reader, Mr. Tab. The pitcher is in the house tonight. Uh, Welcome, uh, Tony. I just think they need power forward coach. Again, guys, I don't say they don't need that, but I feel, 
in my opinion, they're going to maybe go with a skilled talent um, because Lensoy could be out. And Captain, what he bring on the table is another Brandon point, in my opinion, in NHL. We'll see. It's going to be an interesting time. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Mr. Atap. Captain is going to have more points to any player with a Montreal Canadian. And he have more, he's going to have more points at Link Strong per season. Yeah, possibly. I, I mean, statistically, that that could be a possibility. But again, I, I don't know if it kind of addresses their needs. That's That's my only... Uh, now you can get those that. kind of players like this on the on the power forward with a trade at some point, but I can understand. Can I believe a coach uh, you did not want a uh, Benson last season uh, because his size, uh, how you want captain? Uh, because on the ranking, Benson was out at the top ten, and and NHL. I don't see Mr. Tap uh, Benson at number five last season and the draft. It's a bit like in Gilda, Mr. Tap. Aguila is a good piece of the puzzle, but I think yeah. like Benson are 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 in the draft. That's that's the reason behind that. Hmm. So, um, uh, is a part of us a defenseman. Uh, Randy, I would like you, you who you compare. LDP is in the house. Uh, Gary Catton is a pass for me. We need to go uh, to someone to win face up. Uh, Tony DeMarc, welcome to the house. Uh, a Captain Coley is bigger and much. much more faster. Captain Foot Speed, is that not great? It would be an issue with the size about this. Uh, you guys, you don't know Mackley Captain, who was the best player last year at the, at the Linka Gretzky. Yeah, it was. It was, it was Captain. Yeah. It was Captain. This is what you get. You get a 90 point per year with Captain. No one in Montreal in here right now have that kind of skill like Captain. So hey, he has to he has to be well insulated though, I, I think. I'm sorry again? If you go that direction. He's gonna have to be well insulated on, on his line. So you have to have some if you're gonna go with him, you have to put some some size alongside with him as well, coach. You yeah. can't have a small lineup. It, it rules out somebody like New Hook uh, moving up, obviously. You're going to have, obviously, Doc there, which is great as well, because you could use him either at center or on the wing if if the need uh, uh, precipitates it. Um, but it's it's got to be a bulkier, bigger line uh, for it to be effective, I think. Uh, they, they will have uh, to find someone for, for sure to add. But yeah, well, it could be that at 6'4". Right? Yeah. Uh, I just want to inform uh, Marco. Uh, Catton <laughs> is bigger. I look and goalie, by the way. Um, One inch. Catton is 5'11. I look and Cooley, uh, Mr. Marco five, is 5'10. Five, so Cooley yeah, looked like Benson. Uh, not that, but just kidding. Yeah, but. Marco will say one inch is just, you know. Yeah, he, he said about this one inch. Uh, <laughs> uh, Catherine would be a winger in NHL. Uh, um, yes, a possible uh, 26. It could be a same thing with Langstrom, by the way, and 26. Uh, Chris uh, Tempa, I think, would beat the Florida. Chris, welcome back in the house. Uh, I'm talking about Chris Smith. We're getting welcome there. Back. I just hope the Caps uh, get sweep in the first round. Christmas eight <laughs> six seven uh, uh, has to be right, not a left. Uh, Marco, this you have to about this uh, for the right side. Uh, Toto would be Boston. They could uh, would leave with Pareka. Uh, I need to find Wingard with size, uh, top six at uh, talent. If not, is able draft the best defenseman. Uh, <laughs> putting another defenseman at the draft uh, for a uh, draft uh, Parek at uh, two years, it could prove to be Baroka Hudson uh, and twenty six. <laughs> Mr. Luciano Graziano, Mr. Top is in the house. Uh, the Kraken <laughs> lead four to three. Elzerman is really young, almost eligible for 25. Yes, uh, I believe is August uh, called Eiserman uh, Marco about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I tried to pick up there everything here in the chat, Mr. Top. If you want to add something, go ahead. No, I'm just laughing because I read Luciano's comments. He wants okay. you to admit that you were wrong about Pittsburgh. Uh, yes. Uh, for that one, <laughs> for sure. 
Uh, Captain does not have the foot speed to be a Brandon Point uh, for Marco. How about that? Uh, Winnipeg Colorado would be a very close series, Chris. Uh, I uh, also hope the Canucks out sweep in the first round for uh, eight, no. six, seven. Benson would be a top five in 2023, a red draft. Uh, Marco, I know you love a lot Benson, but I don't think so. <laughs> we should just get Marco on here. <laughs> and after that, Bedard. Bedard, yeah. Pentelli. Yes. Will Smith. Yes. And then you have, of course, uh, um, Leo Carlson. Leo Carlson. Uh, he said top five, right? Oh. Maybe number five. How about this one? But we still wait uh, for the player to not make the NHL yet. Uh, that boy is a good underdog. Uh, how about this? Uh, uh, can I, it's 170. I'm not picking Captain A2. They are still away from small forward type. Iserman, Egala, Langstrom would be guess, uh, But guys, Egela is only six foot. Again, uh, I think he's six one. I think uh, six really? one and two hundred and seven pounds, if I recall correctly. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong too. No, no, six foot. Six foot. How much weight? One eighty five. One eighty five. Oh wow! I thought yeah. it was in the. Yeah, early 200s. Okay. So, um, it's only one. Inch. Just, he said, I thought we draft, uh, we'll draft a gala or Parex 7, a laugh at the abs again, and 26. Uh, Canon Dak Anderson rebound next year, Alexandre Mayer. Uh, coach, did you ask me a question? Uh, I think, who do you compare Yar Yarem Chuck? Uh, about this, uh, considering they are the skater, I don't see that. Uh, Kenneth Cadden uh, has eye and skill, which uh, uh, the guard need uh, on that one. Cody is more than it, uh, quite captain uh, and 26. Uh, uh, I don't see the lead logo either, Luciano. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the on the background, guys, is uh, any logo right there, so it's not a background. Let, let no offman and the draft. Uh, uh, it's right. Uh, it's right here, Luciano. Right, right about <laughs> here. There it is. Uh, Alexander asked a question. I saw tap. Uh, talk about the trade uh, draft down. What can be the kind of compensation for this kind of the trade? Example, trade five or six spot. Uh, well, it depends on on how uh, the draft is going, right? Uh, I mean, if you, if you've got a two or three of the forwards that are taken out early and and you really want the next uh, uh, forward available, and you know that the teams that are behind you are uh, itching to get a particular defenseman, then what does it matter whether you have fifth or you have sixth or you have seventh, right? If you can get a little bit more assets that way, maybe you get another draft pick with the one where you exchange the picks, it, it works to your benefit. But there has to be that guarantee, though. Right, that uh, obviously that's that's what's going to transpire. You don't want a team jumping in and then ruining your your uh, calculations. Yeah, usually it's a, a you go down, you get a prospect like Montreal look like they offer uh, uh, yeah. Ascara and uh, fifteen in return. It's rare happening, but not that. Uh, usually you go down for a couple of. Couple of spot like but Spots, five to go yeah. fifteen is really rare. At least you get a really good prospect and return. Uh, you can get example give the spot number twenty five for the Winnipeg Jet. You can maybe have second round number forty and the second round number fifty five example. So that's kind of or you can get a pick lower, uh, higher after that or lower, and then you get a prospect come with that pick and uh, sort of that. Yeah. Randy Walkman, Mr. Okay. Top, compared Yaren Chuck at Evan Bouchard. Um, Yaren Chuck, to, well, that's it's not a bad comparison. I mean, I mean, Bouchard still has to work on his defensive part of the game, but he's definitely, you know, a, a top five or six in the league now, uh, offensively. Yeah. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, defenseman. 
But we'll be interested to see what could happen. Uh, CG is on the house, Mr. Aptap. Uh, CB prepare for the playoff. Uh, wait for the series talk between the Jet and the Colorado Avalanche. Mr. Uh, Aptap, we have a couple of news about the World Championship 2024. Cole Caulfield accepts the invitation of Team USA. He's going to play uh, with the team. And then Nick Ski is still not sure he's going to play with Team Canada. Kevin Cooley accepts the invitation, perhaps to wait to be clear of his health. When I said that, I wanted the one of the person recovery from his concussion, and then Samuel Montembeau said, "Not this year." Let me go. Not this year. I'm going to Cancun. Let me go. I'm going to Cancun. That's it. That's all. With my sobrero. Oh, boy. There we go. So uh, that's happening about conference wise. I'm sorry? Conference wise, it would have been the. I think conference wise, it would have been the best. He would have been the best choice to go. I think it would have benefited him uh, the most of those four players, but you know, different reasons for for not going. Sometimes, uh, yeah, we don't know, and we have to respect that. Absolutely about this, uh, and then you have Mr. Tap um, Joel Mario Armia is going to be with Finland. We expect uh, possible Sakoski join uh, Team Slovakia. Would be interesting Slovakia. if Philip Mazar is going to be with that team with Devoski, something we have to follow up for sure. And then uh, David Rebarka could be another player from uh, for the Moto again, could be a uh, uh, participant of the World Championship. Uh, we have to wait uh, um, from those uh, confirmation about the Moto again. This is the player we're now with her. Can we have other invitation? I'm not sure, but that's happening right now for every, for them. Uh, John Luet is in the house. Uh, I would love to see them go for Nikash. Uh, um, for that, uh, so that's what we got, Mr. Tap. Finally, the Laval market, uh, Mr. Tap. Uh, what happening? What we are? What's going on? First of all, the Belleville Senator uh, win yesterday, but a score to one over time that gave them a yeah. lead by four points, I believe, over the Montreal points, uh, yes. over Laval market. And yeah. now yeah. they play two games back to back during the weekend. This is the two final game of the season, and the Laval market have to beat twice. On the regular time. Irregular. If not, exactly. And over time, it's over for the Laval Rocket. Now, what happening? They have uh, Jaden Strobel, Logan Mayu, uh, Justin Barron. All three are going to join the Laval Rocket. Possible yeah. Alex yeah. Um, uh, look talk play with Jackai on the four line. They wait if uh, Mitchell Stephen is going to be uh, recovery from his injury to play the final two game. Mitchell play a big is a big piece of the puzzle for the Laval Rocket uh, as a center. Finally, Joshua Hua could play the only weekend. I don't know if it's confirmed or not, uh, but this is all the actual player they have for the last part of the turn of this uh, weekend. Yeah, they'll be set. They know what the the prize is and. There's no excuse. They have to go out there and win both games in regular time, you know. So uh, the, they'll pull every every trick in the book to do that. And you know, I I'd look forward to seeing that line with Tuck and um, and uh, Florian Jacki. That's going to be an interesting an interesting line for sure. So that's what we got, Mr. Tap, for the cover of the Montreal Canadiens tonight. Today we'll see what could happen in the next couple of days. But again, Montreal will be a little bit more quiet. We're really focusing on the NHL prediction, Mr. Tap. We're going to get uh, everyone here. Uh, let me bring that one there, Mr. Tap. Every day we do um, a question on my channel. Start it out at ten o'clock. It will be out the next twelve minutes, uh, and then. Um, if I want to give it to you guys, the question of the night, guys, is who is your four star, the undervalue for the Montreal Canadian season 2023-2024? Is it Joel Mario Armia, David Savard, Alex Newhook, or uh, Brennan Gallagher, or any other players? If you have a choice to get that answer, Mr. Senator, for from this question, which player are you yeah. think, talking about? I would I would go with Newhook. Um, I, I think there were a lot of question marks at the time, and then even when the injury hit him, we didn't know what we would get back uh, afterwards. But he's had a very strong return, and you know if he can continue to play like he has with the speed that he has and the level of creativity and opportunities that he he, he sort of opens up for other players. Um, you know, like 
he's going to be a good one here in uh, Montreal. I mean, Armia was a great story in terms of where he started off the year at and uh, what he had to overcome by going to Laval and then coming back. And he's been fantastic since he's been back. Uh, and Savard is legit as well. Um, I mean, all 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 the players there had a, a good up year. But I think Newhook uh, edges all of them in my eyes. Uh, great point about this. All you, you know, uh, a lot of <clears> people <throat> comments in the chat. Saval, Saval, John. Um, I think a lot of people had said Evans for see N26 go with Jake Evans. Not a bad choice. Uh, N26 uh, talking about Jake Evans. I like yeah. that one uh, over there. Honestly. Uh, all the four players there with Jake Evans are the good name you can get a four star, but the impact of David Saval, my opinion, is really the one um, I, I really believe. I play LDP. I believe New Hope played 58 game this season. LDP, I could be wrong here, but um, at some point, you have 50 games, so um, I can go right away here. Uh, 55. Here we go. 55, yeah. Yeah. So, um, David Saval in my pick, Mr. On Top, about this. Uh, but the subject tonight, guys, uh, it's not about Sun Cran. Sun Can. I heard today <laughs> it was not Sun Cran, Mr. On Top. Uh, she told me it's Sun Can. All right, I got it. Uh, Sun Can. So, um, and we're going to bring here, guys. Uh, so, what we do tonight, guys, we have a uh, four match up. Eastern Conference. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to talk about the Western Conference. Uh, and the chat, you can exchange uh, what is your prediction. We have an uh, NHL bracket uh, uh, link uh, we create, uh, and then Luciano put in the chat. Uh, if you want to join us, uh, uh, that'd be great. I believe, Mr. Antab, the first winner it was Alexandre Maillard uh, a couple of years ago. Alexandre is in the chat yeah. right now, so um, uh, if I can recall it, it was him. Uh, so I uh, just want to sharing this with you, Mr. Tap. So go to go. Um, it would be easy to send Mr. Tap, you know, uh, Toronto, Boston, and what do you think? That's it. So what I did, I did some search. So I went to the, uh, the athletic website, Mr. Tap, and I gave some probability percentage, the lineup, and, and we'll see what's happening. But the first matchup, guys, is the New York Rangers, uh, number one, the winner of the present trophy versus the Washington Capitals. Uh, the probability right now, Mr. Tap, is 78% uh, a winner <laughs> the Rangers over the Capitals. Uh, and you can see by four, five, six, seven game. I would love to hear you guys in the chat uh, who are the winner and how many games you expect uh, uh, on that. And maybe who is the, the key matchup players for the team uh, you expect on one specific team and maybe the other team. If the Washington win, what would be the reason the Washington win? So, Mr. Tap. Uh, I will let you talking about that. What is your expectation? What are you looking for? Well, when you look at the, the head-to-head -head that they played this year, Coach, uh, I was kind of surprised by this. They were two and two. Uh, they both won two games each. Um, and, and, and they weren't, uh, I mean, the last two games, I, I think, were a little bit closer back in January. But in December, they were both lopsided games in either direction. So I think... Washington won one of the games four nothing, and then uh, the Rangers won the second one uh, five to one, and then the final two games were both uh, one goal uh, matches. But you know what? I gotta believe uh, as much as Washington is a great story in terms of uh, uh, you know wh what they've had to overcome uh, to to get into the playoffs, especially with their plus minus differential. Um, you know the Rangers have had a, a just a superb year. Uh, they didn't have any pronounced uh, uh, slumps all year long. Uh, they've had some obstacles along the way, but uh, you recall at the beginning of the year, uh, Shesterkin was not at the top of his game, uh, so really quick was the one that was holding him in, and he did a fantastic job. But now lately, I'd say in the last 35 games or so. Uh, he's really coming to his own, and he looks like a, his old self. And for me, that makes the biggest difference. I know uh, Charlie Lindgren has had a great year as well, but really the Rangers have a couple of fantastic goalies that they can rely on. Um, and so I, I got to believe that the Rangers will take this series, uh, and I would say 
I was. I'll, I'll go with five. I think they they can do it in five games. Yeah, I let people take the Rangers. We're gonna tap on that one. Uh, most of us go with five, and that will be LD, LDP said uh, they can't have the worst uh, plus minus or uh, anything to make a playoff uh, in over thirty years. You're absolutely right. I think they are minus forty, if I can recall it. Uh, other players could be yeah. involved, born. But imagine, uh, born. You talk about a trade for Pierre Dubois with Josh Anderson, uh, born. Um, you have to pay the contract of Pierre Dubois for seven years. After that, uh, born. Uh, didn't have a great year. What would be the advantage after f- to spend another four years of Pierre Dubois at 30, 31, 32, 34 years old, and when he cannot produce at 26, 27? So I don't know, born. But what is you think it would be an advantage for the Montreal to get Pierre Dubois uh, for that? So uh, we'll see. And you can see, Mr. Tap, uh, all the blue on the screen, advantage of Rangers over the Capitals okay. uh, about that. And what, one, one factor, Mr. Tap, if you look about the Washington, I know it's small right there, Mr. Tap, but I would try to get I can bigger. See it. No, it's right? good. It's good. So listen, guys, <clears throat> Prodas, Strom, and Wilson, the first line. Ovenskin, McMichael, and Ushi. Milano, Lapierre, and Pacioretty, and Malestine, and Nick Down, and Nicola Obi Kubel. If you look about the, the forward they have, it's really hard to compete with the Rangers, Mr. Tap, when you see that on that one. Then the defenseman, Mr. Tap, Fred Irvary is a good defenseman, not too bad. Carlson have mm-hmm. a really bounce back season, Great Mr. Year. Tap, this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jensen, Very hopefully, is going to be ready on that one. They pick uh, Remus Sadin. Sadin did not start very well at uh, the beginning of the season, get a little bit better on the second part of the season. Uh, TVR, I like the TVR. Uh, the TVR is really a home defenseman that g- gave a lot of good service to Washington. And Alex Ziab is another recent player right there. But the key for the Washington to have at least a, a better playoff is really Charlie Lindgren, uh, the goaltender of the team. Uh, this season for the Washington. If you look now for the Rangers, is that that? Totally different story. Yeah. Here we go. You have Trocek, Panarin, Lafreniere, Roslovic, Zipanejad, a greater, uh, Quell, Okoy, uh, with Wenberg and Kako. And then you have Kudro, Matt Kemp, Ramp, and Vizzi on the third, on the fourth line. The question, guys. It's the really, strength up the middle. It's Panarin, Mr. Natap. Panarin, he has 66 points and 78 game in the playoff. Not too bad. But last year, Mr. Natap, if I can recall it, he, he had only two assists last season. For me, the yeah. Panarin for the Rangers do exactly what he did during the, the season. They need a Panarin performing during the playoff. It's not a bad, but he did not do very well last season. This is they cannot have a Panarin uh, slow uh, playoff. If not, it will be very harder for the New York Rangers. <laughs> I believe this is a guy carry on the team on his shoulder uh, with Lafreniere to check. So uh, this is a guy the, the the lineup we can see, Monsieur, and after that. Yeah, but and think, and oh, the other thing I I would add to that, Coach. I mean, if if you're a team trying to defeat the Rangers, one of the, your main objectives is going to be to play a physical game. I, I think that that's sort of what Panarin shied away from last year. And uh, it, it sort of took away a lot of the ice uh, for uh, some of the good skaters like Zabanajed and uh, Kreider, uh, Trocek, uh, Lafreniere. Um, but I don't see, uh, with the exception of maybe somebody like Wilson, doing that. And the difference this year is they can throw a couple guys out there that could uh, counter that and I'm thinking even if they have to or somebody like Rempe because if they get involved in any kind of uh, incident I mean it's not a big loss for the Rangers to lose Rempe but it's a huge hole for Washington to lose somebody like Wilson so yep. I, I just don't see I don't see Washington bringing that physicality that they need to in order to defeat a team like the Rangers and the Rangers uh, defense is, is rugged like they're they're tough to play against. Well said. Matchup number two, Mr. Tap. Oh, the intersection 75, <laughs> Mr. Tap, from Miami all the way 
to the Everblades, uh, go to Estero, yeah. Four Myers, and uh, Mr. Tap, uh, and then to go all the way uh, Tampa Bay, uh, downtown at the Amelia Arena, Mr. Tap, uh, the winner of, of the Sunny Cup uh, back to back uh, a couple of years ago, the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Florida Panthers. Uh, um, 72% they gave to the Flat Panthers, over 28%. I feel like uh, they don't give enough credit for the Tempo B like me, in my opinion. But this is what they got, Mr. Tap, uh, on the probability on this one. And then you have Mr. Tap, a little bit uh, more information here. I'm going to open up more. Uh, what you see in red is the Panthers. And the Tempo B is a uh, great colors. And better matchup for SIP. The Tampa Bay like the, the Flip Panther have a better overview number the system Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, and their their season record, uh, the three games that they did play, Coach uh, Florida won two of those. Um, but interestingly enough, Tampa won the last matchup, which was in March, uh, uh, by a convincing score of five to three as well over over Florida. Um, and why I say that's interesting is because we've sort of seen uh, Tampa undergoing a lot of um, injuries this year. And they had Vasilevsky that eventually when he did come back, wasn't playing at his, at his usual self because of uh, uh, the surgery that he had. It took a while for him to get back into um, his elite eliteness that he's demonstrated over past years. And right now he's at that level. I think Bobrovsky's had a, a, a good year. I don't want to take anything away from that, but I have yet to really see him at the level that he was last year, especially going into the playoffs. So I, I think that this this is going to be a real battle of, of Florida here. Um, you know, these two teams, there's absolutely zero love loss between them. Uh, it's it, This probably is going to be the roughest, toughest uh, series played in the entire first round um i i almost whoever draws the winner of this game i almost feel like uh they'll have an advantage just because of the, the amount of uh, uh bruising and and injuries that could come out of this series here uh what else can we say um like look at on the one hand i'm tempted to go with tampa just the way they played over the last uh I'd say six weeks, um, but you know, seeing what we saw last year, coach, it's difficult to go against Florida. Um, I'm going to take Florida to win this series, but I, I think it's going to distance seven full games. Uh, yes, uh, Thomas, uh, welcome to the house, Mr. Tap. Thomas Cook. If people don't know, we've been with the child uh, with the channel for many years, uh, but. Uh, Thomas is a big fan of the Panthers. Yes. So um, let's hope they come through. Uh, everything. Hey, listen, I I live in Pen uh, I live in Florida for many years. I coach around there. I know the rivalry now between Adepts and Tampa Bay always winning the playoff series against them. And now it's going to be interesting how they're going to respond. Um, the factor experience, Mr. Tap. Uh, of the Tampa Bay Lightning with Stankos, Point, Kisharov, uh, Edmund, Vesileski. Uh, is it good enough to carry that team all the way to, again, the Flair Panthers? Uh, um, when you go look at the matchup, Mr. Tap, I try to find players can get an, uh, uh, an advantage. For me, the Tampa Bay Lightning is uh, going to be Vesileski. Is Vazinski become yeah. the, the Vazinski we knew, helping the Tampa Bay Lightning? We know what Kishov can bring. On the flip side, Mr. Tap, my key player for the Flair Panthers is really Matthew Ketchup. Um, this is a kind of player he can turn around a series, a, a momentum like that, where is an impact. Is uh, a strong power forward players, and he is a. Um, is it like a, a clunch? players like a, a, you have a word clutch, clutch. A clutch clutch yeah so yeah. he's the kind of player can have a big goal on over time like he did last year i think he did a couple of times last season a back-to-back -back at least maybe three times um 
Again, the Boston Bruins, I believe, it was a series they won on overtime. At the end of the day, I feel this is a guy, this is a guy for the Flat Panthers. The, the rest of the team can follow catch up. Does it make sense? Like, this is a guy, like, his impact is major on the playoff um, and NHL. I think they are the two players uh, could make uh, their team uh, win that series. But this is going to be, I don't see a short series between both of them. Does it make sense? This is going to be no, no. go six, the seven. Distance. And um, it could be at the end. Uh, by a sweat player, but this is what they are uh, for that. The lack of the defense of the Tampa Bay Lightning could be a problem uh, for them. The experience of Tampa Bay is over the Florida Panthers, whatever the Florida been there last season. And the Tampa Bay Lightning are less fatigued this year compared to in the past. So that would maybe helping them to go threat, but the key major core have to show up uh, uh, on that series. Or something like that. So I go with uh, I need to learn, but I know I'm going to go with underdog on that one. Um, I go with temporary <laughs> lightning and seven, uh, but and whoever seven. wins yeah. that series, uh, um, I will be happy at the end of the day. I just want to see a lot of body check, Mr. Tap at there. Like oh, Michelle. you'll see it. Hoo-ha! Hoo-ha! <laughs> so that'll be up in there about this, Mr. Tap. Uh, Panthers, interesting, too many six. Uh, yeah, it's go ahead. It's 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 gonna be interesting. Like you're gonna need you're gonna need a couple players to really step up. I think for Florida, and then uh, like you said, the leader is Kachuk by all means. But we saw last year when they brought in, uh, uh, like Bennett had a very good year, and then even in the playoffs, uh, he he produced as well. Uh, this year, you're gonna have to see. Somebody like Reinhardt continued to score like he did in the regular season. I'd like to see somebody like Verhage step up a little bit more. Uh, maybe Lundell, uh, because those that's where your depth comes in. And and uh, and a lot of people haven't spoken too much about Evan Rodriguez. Uh, I, I think he's had such a good year for Florida. Um, he's involved in every aspect of the game. Uh, he seems to love playing for Florida. Um, it's it's definitely a, a plus in their in their direction. Now with with the um, uh, Tampa Bay coach, do we know much about Sergachev? Is he ready to go first round or not? And uh, not the not the three number one. Okay, so that's that's round a number big, one. He is out. That's questionable for round number two. Okay. Yeah, so I that'll think, hurt a little bit. But. Yes, I agree with you. I think one thing we don't uh, we don't talk a lot is what they add at the third deadline. Uh, the the, the Tampa Bay add Matt Tomba. That's helping the, the defensive a little bit. And they add um, Anthony Sclair, where he have a good see, a good year. It's funny, Mr. Mm-hmm. Tap. Carter Verhey, he, he was a part of the winner of the Saint Cup with the Tampa Bay Lightning, moved to the Flat Panthers, and it's Sclair was that went to the San Jose Sharks last season, and then he got trade at the traded line to go with Tampa Bay. He was a great, um, one of the top three best forward with the most points yeah. in the traded line, uh, Anthony Sclair. So, you know, uh, it's a, again, this is going to go all the way to the end of the tap. The selection I give you tonight, Mr. Okay, tap, so. oh, not my, pra- my, my bracket, Shannon, by the way. So, um, I can change my mind until the weekend, Mr. Tap. So, uh, okay. Joseph Phyllis and, and, is and in the house. Uh, thanks so much for all the likes we got. Like Mr. The text over the everybody. Uh, match on number three, Mr. Tap. Oh, let's you know. Mr. Tap, the Toronto Maple Leaf and the Boston Bruins. Yeah. Yeah, this is. This is interesting. Like, uh, you know, in social media, you're reading a lot about how I think Boston did not give their all in the last couple of games so that they could draw the Leafs. Last time a team did that and was asking for Florida last year, we all know what the results of that matchup was uh, were. So it's, uh, it's, it's, this is another one. It's, it's going to be very tough. You see the percentages there. I, I wouldn't, I would venture to side on those uh, percentages uh, simply because if you look at uh, what's happened over 
not the not only the four games that they played this year where um I, I think Boston was usually the better team but any time that these guys have met in the playoffs they Boston always seems to find a way to 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 win that series uh and break break the hearts of the Leafs but you know what uh I don't know they're both going they're both sort of headed in 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 the wrong direction at this stage right now in my eyes uh, I'll be honest with you like I think Boston has some injuries that they're contending with uh even players that are playing are not playing fully healthy they have Carlo that's been out of the lineup as well that that hurts the defense um but you know what can you say uh if you start with let's start from the back forward and you look at the goaltending situation I don't think that there's a better duo out there than Swayman and Allmark. Um, and with Toronto, I mean, you know it's Samsonov that's going to start, but which Samsonov are you going to get? Like one night he's he's a great goalie, the next night looks like he's being demoted to, to the AHL. Um, it's, it's definitely advantage Boston in that regard. Uh, the defensive end, I, I think the Leafs did a good job to so, sort of uh, – add some size and grit on their blue line uh with the addition of guys like Edmondson um uh, I thought that that was a, a good move on their behalf uh they um also threw in uh, Labushkin in there as well uh, again somebody with good size and 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 he blocks pucks very well as, uh, as well so th they're not bad defensively um but Boston, I would I would give the slight edge to Boston in that regard as well. And then offensively, I mean, you see all the metrics there. They're all in Toronto's favorite. And that kind of has me a little bit worried, even though I've always been firm about defense wins, especially in the playoffs, um, and especially if you got a, a good goalie. I, I just, I'm going to start by saying I think this is another series that will go seven games. And my initial instinct is to go with Boston, but somehow I, I have this this feeling that the the Leafs might pull it off and win in seven games. So I'm going to say Toronto in seven for this one. A lot of people in the chat, Mr. Tap. Thanks for all the like we got. We can see a bit the lineup of the both team. First of all, the Toronto Maple Leafs. We can see uh, Oldberg as the third center. Uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Nalander play on the third line. He tried to go with more balance on his lineup. Uh, not on the defense, and it's tap, uh, uh, Link Green and Edmondson on the third pairing. And you have Benoit and McCabe and Lupushkin again, Riley. Samsonov is the goaltender for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then finally, for the Boston Bones guys, uh, um, what I believe, if you go a little bit more deeper, Mr. Tap, uh, yes. Uh, Pass snack, you can see Marner and Matthews on that one, Zaka and Enen, but Marchand, Coy, and Debraska. Uh, but the line number three, uh, line number four, uh, with the Boston, a bit more advantage. Uh, Kiki have a great year, Mr. Atap, uh, almost 20 gold. Uh, Frederick, not a bad year. Uh, GVR, we know what he can do. And then Patrick Maroon still uh, with the Boston Bronze on the four line. Uh, but the defense, Mr. Atap, is a bit where the big fan, in my opinion, versus uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the goaltender at the <clears> end. <throat> so, did not win any series since 1959, Mr. Atap. The, the probabilities uh, of everything is more uh, advantage of Boston Bruins. Uh, and um, I will go slightly with the Boston Bruins uh, whatsoever. Jim Montgomery never win a playoff uh, uh, series, round number one uh, with Dallas Star and the Boston Bones. Uh, this is a little bit what I'm a little bit concerned about the Boston Bones. Uh, um. And they're going to miss that. I know, I know, like you look at Boston up the middle, and I know a couple of the players had a decent year, but you still have Zaka, that's your number one center, followed by Coyle and Geeky. And Boquist, I don't know. I don't know if that's strong enough to get, to get the job done. But uh, Boston seems to pull it off all the time. But you know, yeah. they've got to win sometime. The Leafs. <laughs> the matchup for me for that 
is going to be the bottom six versus the bottom six, Monsieur Nartap. You have a Agreed. team built on the system or the defensive, where the goal again is yeah. not a lot, the Boston Bruins, right? Versus a Toronto Maple Leaf, they can score four goals per game approximately. And the special team could be a very important role on that uh, series uh, between the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leaf. And you put this, all the dice together, you put this on the table, you look about this, you said, uh, I cannot find Matthews and Marner on the table. Where are they? <laughs> So, it's okay. I would take advantage of myself up with the Boston Bruins and seven All right. uh, on that one. But um, always something happening with the Ottoman Party <laughs> every year. Always. Uh, always. A suspension of uh, Bondine, a suspension of Kadri, an injury of Tavares. And what's next? What could happen this year, guys, for the Ottoman Party? Not maybe have an excuse, but something we could create another big uh, social media from the Toronto <laughs> Maple Leaf um, and for that team again in Toronto. Can Brett Marchand become that kind of player? We'll see. But um, I'll go with Boston. It'll be a good series. Yeah. Pierre Martin okay, we'll is see. in the house. Roy is in the house. Welcome, everybody. Thanks again to join us. And don't forget to click on the like at the last matchup of the series, guys, on the Eastern Conference. The Carina Hurricane versus the New York Islanders. Um, this yeah. is the team yeah. of the yeah. Islanders on the standing of number seven of the eight team in the playoff behind, just and over the Washington Capitals. Yeah. Um, that's just what you got. You have a, a Carina Hurricane, a couple of points behind the New York Rangers. Uh, they start slow. Injury at the goaltender. Anderson Renta did not do well until he got hurt after that. Uh, the defensive of the, the Canada Hurricane at the beginning of the season, guys. Uh, it's funny, guys. Kokanemi, it was a one great key for the first 15 game of the season. And then the Canada cannot win. Kokanemi <laughs> disappear. They can't try to look for him in the jungle. And the Canada become better. And they finish strong this season. One of the most consistency team, guys. They are uh, the top five with the most goal against. Uh, they are number one a goal again a five versus five, and they are the top five puck position on the on the stats uh, for the in NHL with the Edmonton Oilers, the color of Avalanche, uh, and this is those stats we don't see, but they are so important when you evaluate a team or something like that. For me, can I have a little bit more advantage over the New York Islanders? I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, deeper about the matchup, but I would like to hear what you think yeah. about this. Well, I was ecstatic when the Islanders finally made it because I've been calling their number for the last couple of years. Um, and even last year, we both had them going to the finals uh, based on what we saw the previous two years before that. And, and the reason is, I mean, here's a team that is built for the playoffs, right? Like, especially when you look at their their goaltending, you're looking at their defense and, and the style of play that they play. Um, they're a team that's hard to to sort of out-muscle and get to the puck. Uh, they win a lot of the battles. But they went and they drew, of all the teams they could have gotten in the East, they went and they drew probably a mirror image of themselves in terms of what they can do in the playoffs. And that's Carolina. Um, you know, it's it's going to be hard here. Like if you start, I mean, there's little question that on paper, at least, the the Hurricanes are a far better team than the Islanders. Uh, you see the metrics right in front of you there that, that support all of that. Um, you know, during the course of the year, Carolina went 2-1-1 one, and one against the Islanders. So it was fairly close. Um, where I'll probably start is with the goaltending. Um, even though it's close, um, I, I think when you have Sorokin and Bar Barlamov uh, versus Freddie Anderson and, and Kojekov, uh, I, I think there's a slight advantage to the Islanders there. Um, so you're not. I, I think we're we're bound to see a very low scoring um, uh, series. You're not going to get those. Those games that uh, are, are high scoring at all, I don't think. Uh, but I think the Hurricanes' offense is is more superior uh, than the Islanders. 
even though guys like Paul Miri have come out of nowhere and uh, obviously, you know, Horvat and um, uh, Nelson and, and Bo Horvat, uh, uh, Aho, uh, the other Sebastian Aho has had a decent year for the Islanders. I don't think it matches with uh, uh, the three lines that Carolina could throw at you. And, and that's where I think the game will be won. It's one of those things, Coach, where uh, it's one of those series where you don't you want to be able to get that first goal. I mean, both teams can play a shutdown type of game, and they're relatively successful at doing that. Um, and, and I believe they're going to play it very tenaciously, very cautiously, it's going to be like a bo- two two heavyweight boxers that that sort of feel each other out for quite a while before they start delivering, you know, the, the big blows because they have to open up because they're trailing. So I, I think this is going to be one of those series that whoever scores first on a frequent basis is the team that's going to win. But I, I'm going to throw, as much as it hurts me to say it, I'm going to go with Carolina to win this series. And I think they do it in uh, – I think this. Uh, I'm bouncing between six and seven. Uh, I think it'll go six. For Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Montreal Canadiens have very bad news. Uh, the uh, the pick of the Winnipeg Jet with the win tonight, Mr. Tap, they losing four spot. Oh boy. <laughs> From twenty five to twenty nine. It's like last year. I don't know what's wrong with Montreal Canadian, but every time they, they have just a don't good have a luck. pick, they cannot get. And don't be surprised if it's on the top. Calgary finish at the bottom 10, and they're going to get a Flare Panthers. The Flare Panthers are going to be at the last, on the top five NHL standing next year. They're going to select again with Flare So they're going to get. Last year, they got uh, the pick number 31. Calgary. Right? Calgary's, right? Or was it Calgary's last year? No. No. Um, I forget who it was. Maybe somebody. You have to be late, Mr. So that was 31. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, anyhow, um, I think it could be Florida Panthers, but it was Florida Panthers. Yeah, Florida. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. It was Florida yeah. Panthers, right? The year before that, uh, down, you get the, the, the Winnipeg Jet this year. And then you're going to get next year the Flair Panthers again. So those <laughs> first round pick uh, did not benefit a lot of Montreal Canadiens uh, so far. Uh, yeah. the, the pick of uh, the, the 31 bring Alex Newhook with the 37. This year yeah. at 29, don't be surprised Montreal make a trade with that one over there now. Uh, so, um, ouch. It'll be interesting. Yeah, ouch is right. <laughs> but you never know. You never know. If they do their homework, they'll still get a good player out of it. Yeah. It's not a matter, guys. It just, um, it's now, a bottom six player. The only thing could help in a bit Montreal Canadian is a, a team like Colorado or any team are not on uh, they are they are in front of Winnipeg Jet. But could push Winnipeg Jet from twenty nine to twenty eight. At 227. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Because a Colorado finished 26, but if they go to the final, now going to jump in 29. And now Winnipeg Jet go from 29 to 28. So we'll see what yeah. could happen about we'll this see. one over there. We'll see, yeah. Mr. Four, you is and- in the house, guys. Don't forget to click on the likes. Eh? So and I, I suppose you're re- you're recording all of these, Coach, all our predictions. I'm sorry. Are you re- are you recording all the predictions? Uh, for uh, this one. Yeah. Or, uh, I'm not done I, yet. I, I was can't... just reading about this. Look at for soon. Can Boavar <laughs> slip to 29? I don't think so. Look uh, for Boavar, uh, but Letourneau could be there. Letourneau, yes, he could. And he's been uh, really improving because he he was 
he started off almost in the late second round in terms of rankings and he's made his way up i would say towards the end of the first round yeah uh, my underdog for for you he think is the new york canada so anyway finish this one mr top to on, on the on the right now to, uh to get that one there uh look patrick what did a great job for new york canada bring that team all the way to the playoff that was the, the expectation when they get him uh congratulations on that one but the lineup right now mr top jarvis how guanzel uh, they put um uh, it's funny, Jordan saw with uh, Chef Nikov and Martin Nook uh, about that. And uh, Kukani play now on the four line with Kusnezov and Fass. Uh, Nick Cash, Teravenin, Mr. Tap, and Drury. Think about this, Mr. Tap. You have Nick Cash, you have Teravenin yeah. on the third line, and you now you have Kusnezov on the four line. This is deep. That's right. This is It maybe is. one of the most depth, deep lineup. Uh, with the Florida Panthers, Mr. Tap. And the defenseman, Mr. Tap, Burns, Slavin, Seketch, Pesci, Chatfield, Orlov, and D'Angelo uh, is on the, uh, the big at uh, the bar uh, at the North Carolina right now. Uh, sit at home winning if you have a phone call to miss uh, something. So, again, the athletic Anderson. This is a team guys can play with uh, the, 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 goal, the recent kid, uh, Coach Chekhov, also. So in the playoffs, so this is a deep, guys. Um, I go with Carolina, guys, and five on that one. Um, and I will tell you the reason behind that. Tell me. This is the reason why. All that, the, as a center, is not a center number one, Mr. On top, in, in my opinion. It's more like a center number two uh, in NHL. Again, I, oh, I have a difficult time. You look about fashion, second line, Mr. Tap, is this gas on the first line? This is a difficult time for me to hear that. Um, they cannot have any players, Man Islanders, cannot have a bad, a bad um, playoff. And then after that, I like the defensive uh, overall or the, the defense for the New York Islanders. This is a series Very that strong. Mr. Tap is going to be a 2-1 game, a 3-2 game. A uh, 3-1 yeah. game, a 2-0 game. This is a low-scoring game It's going to happen. Advantage yeah. again, Carolina guys uh, on that one. I will go in five on that one. The only way we can go in six is like Valamov or Zorokin play over the head uh, again at Carolina Hurricane. The problem with Carolina is not that. He's on the road. Mm -hmm. So um, We saw that last year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. So that's what's happening about this uh, for Mr. Nartap on that series uh, uh, of the four matches. Score the first goal. Uh, on this one. And then uh, everybody want to join our league. We are on the league of the, uh, called the NHL.com backslash bracket. And then looking for the league. It's called Ad Nation Podcast. And Lucian is going to get the link for you guys about this. I try to pick up everything here. Um... Uh, Uh, Chris said uh, Detroit should be uh, instead of the Washington. The Winnipeg and Colorado series will be very close. Uh, Chris, uh, stupid flame destroyed the Sharks by now 5 to 0. Carolina, I'll explain a structure why. Great point. Avalanche can do this if the goalie show up. The one will help the app to have a better pick. Alex. Alex, huh? we're going to talk about the Western Conference tomorrow night, guys. The Canada Avalanche, honestly, is a Gorgiev uh, or Georgiev or Gorgiev, whatever you want to call him. Um, not very good year. Points uh, percentage of 895 this year. And since the All Star game, he did not have a really good uh, year uh, with the team. Is below at 890. So uh, this is a big question. For you, I have a question for uh, for you, my son. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, of the Akitsik uh, said? Uh, Matthew is the best playoff player, and anything uh, and anything asked the 28. And Hannafin is the 28th? I'm not sure I understand that, but I, I don't agree with Matthews is the best player in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't really shown anything near that. That's one of the reasons the Leafs have, have been ousted early in 
in the playoffs over the last few years is their top line has not produced. And I'm not sure what what you're saying about uh, Hannafin as well. Chris Rutt go with Karina versus Edmonton in the final. Uh, my bold prediction for John, uh, Tampa Bay versus uh, Dallas, uh, Tampa Bay win. Let's have a thing about that. Uh, Winnipeg winning 4-2. to two. Here we go. Kane is an absolute team, uh, Luke Lavoisin. Uh, I may be as well change my mind for the second round. Uh, I had Rangers beating the <laughs> Kane, but uh, reconsidering, just nervous about the Kane, uh, go tending, uh, uh, Marco, about that one or that? Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. And by, uh, by the way, uh, just so everybody uh, knows, I, Marco did go with uh, Panthers in six, Toronto in seven, Rangers in five, and the Canes in six. Patrick LaWhite, Mr. Nertap, is in the house. Uh, uh, not a problem, Patrick. Uh, you stay too long at the grocery store. Uh, at the Costa <laughs> to get all your beer to fill up uh, your fridge, uh, Patrick. Looking for uh, a bet. <laughs> Marco Darabé said, my name played 83 games this year. Uh, yeah, that's right. With the change of teams, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's the one the over there uh, for that. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what got through the, the all the playoffs uh, on the Eastern Conference, Mr. Uh, Tap, for this. Uh, uh, then we have, uh, I don't know if you have some people um, in the chat want to add more information. Have any questions? Want to, uh, oh, so I thought we're not done. Um, no, we're not done. We're not done. Because now, Mr. Tap, no. I don't want to squeeze you, but I never talk about this to anyone tonight. And I don't want to put you on the hot seat. It's not an hot seat, but I think it's a great conversation in the chat because we do this. Uh, I'm going to add more for tomorrow for Marco. But Mr. Tap, we're going to start with this one, if you don't mind. Um, who is the winner of the Hart Trophy and the MVP? <laughs> Mekinen, McDavid, Kusharov, oh, and Matthews. Oh, Have a good night, Nicola. Uh, well, I, I think Matthews enters that equation if he scores the 70 goals. Unfortunately, he fell to 69, and it was a bit of a pipe dream amongst those four, uh, in, in my opinion. So, He's off the list. Um, I mean, this was such a great race, Coach. Like, when you consider that for how many years have we had only three players that have gotten uh, 100 assists in one year, and this year we got two of them, both in, in Kucherov and McDavid, that got 100 assists. Like, it's it's just remarkable, and it shows how, how well-balanced these three players are and how close they're going to be in the voting. Um, if you're asking me, I, I mean, I've swayed between, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I swayed between McDavid, uh, because, and McKinnon, uh, simply because I, th I think McDavid showed his value, um, uh, uh, how he put the team on his back and pretty much since, um, you know, that slump that they were in at the beginning and, He's he's put the team on his back and he's gotten he's averaged at least two points per game along the way. Uh, if that's not value to your team, I don't know what it is. Uh, but McKinnon has had a great year. I've I've kind of seen him play quite a bit and uh, not just this year, but in the past. But in terms of this year, he's he's been their premier player uh, without a doubt. Uh, I know both of them, all three of them have good complementary pieces so you can't say well you know he's he should win it because he has weaker wings on on his side to, to play with uh but in the end uh who pushed the most and won is kucherov um it, this was close at one point i think two points separated uh first from third in in terms of the total amount of points that they scored and I know McDavid got injured and, and kind of Colorado went on a bit of a slider towards the end uh, and Tampa was on the way up. So it looks like Kucherov obviously is going to win the scoring championship. And usually that's the way they like to lean. Um, they would love to give it to McKinnon uh, and the, uh, the writers, but 
I think I have this funny feeling it's going to go to Kucherov. You go with Kucherov? Yeah, that's not my heart. That's my brain thinking. <laughs> yeah. My heart would like to see McDavid, but... Uh, the only problem with Kucherov and Santat is minus is plus. True. True. That's but... one I believe will be that one over there. And the fact that Tampa Bay like Nain, um, then it's funny because the MVP guys, all the four players they have there, no one of them win the division. No, you're right. right. They finish second, or they finish third, or they are the wild card. And the reason Kisharab is a wild card for me could be an impact on that one. Um, the one other point could be. Um, Factors, but McDavid did it, and Kishra did it. True. So it would be equal. Um, now, if you remove Kishra, we still have a good team, right? But maybe not a playoff team. You never know. No, but I still believe they're going to get. They have a good team. If you remove Matthews, you remove 70 goal of this is a really high percentage for the Toronto Maple Leaf. And McDavid is out. It's another big piece of the puzzle. But still, they have Iman, they have McDressel. But if you remove McKinnon out, this is the yeah. This is the team. They cannot survive without McKinnon, the Colorado Avalanche. So my point here. It's going to be McKinnon over everyone because of that impact of McKinnon create on this team uh, this year. This is his best career point-wise, goal-wise, overall, Missanta, for McKinnon. And in my opinion, I think they will go with McKinnon over the reason I mentioned to you about that. Uh, the key now, Missanta, is I can that should become a nomination over one of Kishar McDavid, yeah. I don't see that. Look, the, absolutely, I think Matthews is going to get, he's going to rank up there as well. Uh, he's going to steal some some points uh, from the total. But, um, and and I hear what you're saying. And and I, I, I tend to agree. Like, that was my first impulse is to say maybe McKinnon because a lot of the writers will think he hasn't won it and it's his time to win it. And so... That should never be a criteria for winning the Hart Trophy, but that human element always comes into play. And, you know, for that reason, I would agree with you. I guess when I said Kucherov, and it really hurt me to say it because I'm not the biggest fan of Kucherov, uh, to be honest, but when you look at all three of them, I think he was the most consistent. Like I was always waiting all year long for him to go into a bit of a, a slump, like even even three or four games. And he never did. He never did. He he was consistent from the beginning, uh, right to the to the last game. Um and it wasn't just power play. It, I, I I think I think he could have had more goals, but he's you know he 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 um gave up a lot of assists just to obviously try to get to the hundred mark uh, as well. Um, and he did get to it when it seemed like it was improbable. For McDavid, it, it was much more uh, possible, and he actually did do it. And it's going to be tough. Like, I, I think if McDavid doesn't get hurt, I, I think he's in the equation big time. But for some reason, I don't know, the consistency led me to go with uh, Kucherov, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a good conversation that shot there. Uh, about what's going on in the chat for sure that people can figure out uh, what's going on. Uh, try to get uh, more information about the... I have a question, Mr. Go ahead. If you finish first and the division, mm -hmm. this is change the impact of the sending at the end? For what? Uh, for the initial draft? 
Uh, not, no, it doesn't. I don't believe so. Are you saying like, uh, for example, like Florida? Let's take Florida as an example. Yeah, it's because the uh, Florida Panthers and the uh, Vancouver Canucks are under now a Winnipeg jet. And under Dallas too. Right? So, so Winnipeg Jet are going to be understanding below. They are right now over them. But when they first the first round, if Flat Panthers win, if Canucks win and Winnipeg Jet lose, are the first division move up or not? I'm trying to look in for 2023, 2022 right now, but uh, yeah. they don't give me the the, the trait of the of the draft pick. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Maybe somebody in the chat might know. Because right now the, you know the. Right now is the, the 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 Winnipeg Jet out number four. Overall. Overall, um, and then you have the Flat Panthers, the Vancouver Canucks, all under them. No, I think I think you still have you have Dallas ahead of them. You have the Rangers. Um, you have Florida. I think tonight counts because it depends what Vancouver does, right? Because Vancouver can Vancouver last Friday. tonight again the the Winnipeg Jet. So the Jets finish fourth then, yeah. Uh, Marco said he think his overall pick for draft. Uh, it's only I believe me, it's go all the way to the third round is four round. That's the only thing it could happen about that. AK is in the house. Doesn't the impact of the first round have something to do with it as well? If Winnipeg lose the first round, the pick Montreal get will be between 17 24. I think that's that could be right. Yeah. Because it matters. I mean, you could be a top team and lose the first round. Of I don't the see that. I don't see that, Mr. On top. They don't affect anything, number one, round number one, round number two. I thought it did, but I, I I'm confused right now. Like this is bothering me right now. <laughs> Somebody will look it up for us. <laughs> like I tried to check what happened in last season. Yeah, I'm looking at that too. Hmm. Winnipeg called up for American Hockey League player and won and this goes up there probably about that. <laughs> Draft position is based on the playoff result and 26. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I'm I'm pretty sure that has something to do with it. Because if you I look think at the Florida, number one, number two round does not make an impact. But we have to look but at remember the, the show. But coach, remember last year where Florida Florida was not yeah. number one. Well, team Florida Mr. go all the way to the end. So I don't want to take Florida. That's right. I would like to take a team uh like uh last the first round, uh the Boston Bruins. Here we go. The Boston Bruins is a great example, Mr. Top. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. They, right. they were number one overall. They went number they one overall. They traded their pick last year, right? So they should have they should have had 17th pick then. Trade uh 2023 20, draft pick. Who did trade that pick? Uh I'm not sure. Talk about the rules. <laughs> for Tyler to, for Tyler Pertuzzi, Mr. Nata. 
They traded it? Yeah, yeah but at first... But where did they select in the, in the draft? Yeah. Um, or did they even have a first? Uh, the Boston Bulls I can't tell the position for the Detroit going for a first one pick at 24. I don't think that has anything to do with that. The Boston Bruins acquired Carnet out of way for the Washington Capitals for Craig Smith, the 2023 first round pick. And so the Boston Bruins acquired Melissa for the Washington Capitals for Craig Smith, 2023 first round pick. So Washington is on top. Yeah. Draft 2023 NHL. That matter dependent on the deal. Yeah, they traded that that pick away. Um, I just don't remember who, but. Anyways, we'll research it, Coach. We'll get it. We'll get it right. <laughs> We're going to get this right. That's not that for sure. I tried to get now the Washington's the Capitals. Let's see uh, if I can. I'll give me that one over there. Out here. It's not that. The next trophy. The Jack Adams. Is? <laughs> Where's Martin St. Louis? <laughs> <Let> me... <laughs> oh. Wow. Um, some good nominations here. Uh, I mean, I, I really like what Brunette has done, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm, I'm also a bit partial to, to Rick Bonus and where he's brought the Winnipeg Jets. Like, he took a team really... And I, I know Shevel Dayoff had, had quite a bit uh, of work to do over the summer because we, we had a team in Winnipeg there that was very disgruntled. Uh, you could tell that the the team chemistry was not at par uh, with what it should be to be a winner. They got rid of a couple pieces. They made a trade, and, and I, I thought it was a fantastic trade in, in getting back pretty much an entire line for Pierre-Luc Dubois. Um, but uh, you can tell in Winnipeg, when you look at a guy like Velarde, the importance he brings to that team. I mean, he's he's the stick that stirs the drink. Um, and when he's healthy and he's out there, it's a different Winnipeg team. Um, and then they followed it up by, you know, extending both Shifley and, and Hellebuck, which made them extremely happy. And, and you could tell... It was very contagious. You throw in a couple guys like, you know, Perfetti, and then they picked up uh, Monaghan and Toffoli. And it's not easy to juggle that, Coach. And, and I think Rick Bonus brings that experience to the team that enabled them to click the way they are. Um, like, I'm expecting good things out of Winnipeg in the playoffs. Um, so I'm going to lean towards Bonus. But I, I think Brunette's right there as well. Um, those are my two. Mr. Tap, I got the answer. I, I What's cannot, the answer, sir? I cannot finish the show without the answer, Mr. Tap. I have to figure out this. Share it. Share it. The Boston trade, the Boston trade, the first one pick to the Washington for Adaway. The Washington. And where did Washington pick? The Washington trade that pick for the Toronto Maple Leaf. Last year, for Remus Sadin, and at they twenty-eight did. overall pick, the Toronto Maple Leafs select Cole One. That's it. So, the first round, guys, the second round does not affect your standing in NHL. Okay. Yep. That's the reason behind that, Mr. Tap. So, 
Like I said, you have to go with the third one. But is it is it only for the top four teams though that it's not affected? Like I'm thinking of a team that finishes. Like take take somebody like LA this year. They're yeah. either going to finish wild card or they're going to finish third in the division. Yeah. So if they get kicked out, uh, if they win the first round, it's not that right. Yeah. They Doesn't still change. stay where they at. Okay. If they win the second round, right? They go move on to the third round. Now they're going to go right. all the way to twenty nine. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. That's that's the reason behind that. So um, so just rounds one and two don't affect them. That's the reason up in this uh, for this year. We're gonna open that team. Here we go, guys. Uh, the initial draft, Jack. I uh, done for me. I have two people there. Um, what three of them? Uh, maybe four now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. That's a safe bet. Go with all of them. <laughs> Tuckett Vancouver is uh, really the underdog for everything. The expectation of Vancouver and Santa, it was um, lower. And to bring that team at the winner of that season in front of Edmonton and Vegas and the Los Angeles, this is a great job. The bar uh, with the Dallas Star, Mr. Santa, over Colorado and Winnipeg, this is a great job for Dallas. But the expectation of Dallas was to compete to the end with Colorado. So, yeah. below Tokyo. And they did. La Violette. To be number one in the NHL and to be over the Carolina Hurricane to win the decision is been pretty good. I put one out, Tarquet Laviolette over Tobar. Prunet, no one was expecting Nashville to make the playoff uh, that way exactly. and to have a season over 90, 94.98. I don't know the final at the end. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm going to put Mr. Top, Tarquet, Brunette, Laviolette, Tobar. Barnes, when you pay Jet, we knew the Winnipeg Jet are going to compete at the third to finish four in the standing. That's pretty amazing for that. So I would put now Taquette, Barnes, Brunette, La Violette, and Dobar. Who is the winner? Oh, wow. I will go with Rick, uh, Rick Taquette, Mr. Tap. Whatsoever, the second half of the All Star, uh, send the All Star game. Vancouver is in the middle of NHL. Well, that's 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 the issue. I think that, in my eyes, brought it down. Because the difference with the first three that you said there, for Tuckett with Vancouver, DeBoer with Dallas, LaViolette with the Rangers, I mean, they're walking into a situation where they already have a stacked team. Uh, they're deep teams, all three of them. Um, I'm looking at something like Nashville, that nobody really expected to be in the playoffs this year. And I'm looking at Winnipeg, which I think many people at best had them as a wild card team um, and, and probably out of the playoffs based on all the turmoil that they were going through in that organization. And then all the talk about everybody wanting out, like Hellebuck, Shifley, Pierre-Luc Dubois, um, and, and others to follow if, if that was to happen. And so I think for those two guys in particular, Brunette and Bonus, to bring them out of that culture and into a winning culture, I, I think it just speaks more to, to them than it does the other three. Because the other three, let's face it, the Rangers, uh, Dallas um, in particular, those two teams are, have been very good uh, the last uh, few years. Talk, it's an interesting one. I, I like the addition there. But you'll remember even when Boudreaux went in there. Um, like he took that team and he pretty much brought them to almost a playoff spot the year before. And then he ran into all sorts of injuries and bad luck the next year. And then that's when Talk came in. But the nucleus was there, coach. You know what I'm saying? Like you still had the key players. They just weren't performing. So I give talk a credit in that he brought he brought them to that next level in terms of achieving their maximum potential. Uh, where I shy away a little bit from Tocket is the second half. Now you you could say, and I think it would be legitimate to say that with the absence of Dem Demko, that's why we saw Vancouver sort of decline a little bit. Um, 
and it's not so much attributable attributable to talk it for that. Um, yeah, great point about this for sure. I still believe talk it, it, get it. I understand your point of view about the second yeah. half, but uh, yeah. Well, that one, Marco, give us some information right now in the chat. Uh, the team you made the playoff and the previous season, but did not win either the division and the regular season or play. Um, they are in the conference final, final uh, pick 17 to 24, up to 28. The team uh, that won the division and the previous season, but did not play in the conference final, potential pick 25 to 28 for that. Uh, the team at last uh, the conference final pick at 29 30 and the winner at the 30 31. So, if I can understand you, Marco, uh, the Panthers and the Carolina, uh, the Panthers and uh, Vancouver go over the Winnipeg Jet, and the Winnipeg Jet are going to drop at 27. And ever, they yeah. nobody go if the Jet does not reach the third round are going to select a number 27 anyway yeah it sounds that way from the now way it's worded now the the good question about this marco is uh, for everybody if the rangers lose at the first round second round they are going to move down at 28 and then the jet go to 26 Missanta. Yes, yes. Really interesting about this. Uh, I love it. I love it. Thanks a lot for the verification. Uh, then, uh, how about the Canucks uh, to win the Stanley Cup at fifth year this year? It could happen then. All the all the Western Conference team guys going to be tomorrow night with Marco. Uh, keep your question for tomorrow night. We're going to go back tomorrow with the, all the Western Conference. Mr. Tap to finish the show tonight uh, and for everybody. Uh, the last trophy is for this one is on top, uh, the Norris. I did not give you the easy one. Marco is going to get the easy one tomorrow night. But you give okay. you one one. Ken McCall, <laughs> Quinn Hughes, and Roman Uzi. I look, I I, I don't see anybody else, Miss on top. No, I don't see no, anyone absolutely. can go that. You know, we talk about five coaches. We talk about four um, MVP. But that one, it comes to three players. McCall, Hughes, and Uzi. I would love to hear from one. Someone talk about John Cooper, by the way. I think it was Zach Davidson before that. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a fair one as well. I mean, here's a guy that for many years has kept that team uh, afloat, really. In and he's well liked by his players, so he merits uh, some some talk in the conversation as well. Um, with regards to the uh, the defenseman coach, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean. It's it's a battle between these three. Uh, Yossi, I had I didn't have him originally in the equation because it took a while for for him to get started this year. I thought, uh, but when he came on, I mean, no doubt about it. Uh, um, he's he's probably the team's MVP without a doubt. Uh, but I'm gonna have to lean towards Quinn Hughes this year. I think that he's just uh, uh, had a, a, a superb year um, in in terms of what he's contributed. I mean, I think he finished off with 91 points. And last year, I think Carlson had just over 100 points uh, to win it. Um, so he's right there. Makar, I think, I don't know what he did tonight, but if he even played, um, he had 89 points. Uh, and then Yossi was third in, in that category, 85. But three three excellent candidates. But I'll, I'll lean towards Quinn Hughes. Uh, it could happen. I was typing. Uh, the, yeah. The last four years, Mr. Tap, the winner of the trophy, President Trophy. Three of them reach the final the following year. So the Boston Bruins are in good position right now, Mr. <laughs> to win, to go all the way to the final Stanley Cup. 
They are the winner of the President Trophy last year, and they don't make it. And now uh, they could make it if we follow that. The ten, the the, the weight. You see that them is not up. Uh, yeah. You know what, Coach? I'm I'm starting to rethink that Toronto Boston series. I, I I just I don't know. I can I can't. I know I said Toronto seven, but. Mr. Uh, Tap, the Toronto Maple Leaf entered the playoff for a four game win less, win less scared. Understand? Well, that doesn't surprise me. I, I think they, the last they had to enter the playoff, Mr. Tap, with four game win less scared and to reach the final Stanley Cup. Which team it was? And to reach the Stanley Cup? Uh... I don't know. I'm not sure. Montreal Canadian in 2021. Oh, really? Yeah. But they, yeah, okay. So the year before yeah, they, that, they got eliminated yeah, in yeah, four games. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And now the Toronto got the, the same from the Flair Panthers. But what I just said, one of the two is going to be wrong because I just said Boston Bruins won the trophy, present trophy, and the winner, the three of the four go all the way to the end. So, I just, I know. just but talking about Boston, it. I, the Norris Trophy, Mr. Latap. The Trophy Norris, Mr. Latap, should be Roman Ozzy, in my opinion, uh, with over should 20 be. gold. It was the reason that it was the reason behind the Nashville Predator who they are. But at the end of the day, it's not about this, about the consistencies, about offensive, defensive, everything like that. They're going to give back to Kel McCarr, but. My Ooh. heart would be with Roman Ozimus on the top. Um, Quinn Hughes, a wow. little bit there, but not good enough. Oh, but, oh, at the end of the day, it would be Ken McCarr, but my heart is about Roman Ozzy. Well, I mean, I think Roman Yossi was uh, sort of cheated at, uh, of it the year before from Carlson. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it would be justice if he got it this year. But you don't win a trophy based on your previous year's uh, accomplishments. You have to base it on what's there this year. Um, again, you lose any one of these three players on your team, you're in trouble. Um, so you can't go with that. I, I don't know. I just I just think Quinn Hughes sort of was the most consistent from start to finish. That's why I went with him. Yeah. And, you know, Nashville was one of the best teams. And um, so, Tap, we're not going to see you tomorrow night, right? Right. So, well, whether you be in the, the chat, chat or not, but I, I, yeah. at the end of the show right now tonight, we don't go deep about that. I want to know your winner of the Western Conference tonight, uh, Ms. Tap. Uh, um, at what least are the you matchups? Can, uh, at least you gave me something different right there. But, first of all, the Dallas Star are going to play again. The Vegas go tonight. Or they're going to play against the Kings at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Um, and then do you think difference. that change your matchup or not? He said, I have to wait on that one. I'm not sure we can skip that one. So we go with you, the the the, the one we know. The Vancouver cannot okay. Nashville, a Colorado, Winnipeg. Okay. I'll uh I'll I'll take I think Nashville wins this just because I I didn't like the direction Vancouver was in towards the end. And I think Nashville has played has played a, a great season all year long. Like they were never in in any major slumps. They had two. As a matter of fact, I I believe they had two long winning streaks as well. Um, that uh, was in in their repertoire. Um, and what was the other game? The other oh, Winnipeg and Colorado. Winnipeg, Colorado. And here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call the first upset. I'm going to take Winnipeg. Uh, I think Colorado is a good matchup for them. They played during the course of the year uh, three times, and and Winnipeg not only won the previous two games, um, but the la last two games in particular, they beat them 6-2 at home, and they beat them 7 nothing in Colorado uh, just a little while ago on April 13th. So uh, I, I think... I think they have all the ingredients. I trust Hellebuck a lot more than I do Georgiev. Um, 
you know, the defense probably advantage Colorado, uh, but the offense, I think, um, I, I think when you really look at it, Winnipeg is a deeper team than Colorado uh, offensively. So I'm going to take uh, Winnipeg to win that one in seven. What about um, Edmonton? Whatever they face through the Kings or the, the Vegas, that changes your mind? Or do you think Edmonton is going to go through anyway? I think it's a safer bet to say that they, they can defeat uh, uh, the Kings. Uh, I think they've done it on a, a consistent basis. Uh, both in uh, in the regular season and also in the playoffs in past years. So if they're playing LA, I'll take Edmonton. If they're playing Vegas, it's it's, it's going to be a, an interesting uh, an interesting goal. I, I I'm venturing. I, I'd love to see what Vegas comes up with because you know these injuries that they have. Like you can't just turn off the switch on and off and come back uh, game eighty three and all of a sudden you get players playing at their peak. It takes time to get in there. I think the longer Vegas goes into the playoffs, the stronger they'll they'll become. So if Edmonton is playing them in the first round, I think that's the best time to get Vegas, and I think they can defeat them. So I would take Ed Edmonton in both cases. And, and the other one was Dallas. That is going to beat anybody they're going to play against. Yeah, I believe so. I, I think uh, they're they're stronger than LA. And who's the other possible matchup? The LA Ducks and take the lead 1 0 against the Golden Knight. Find where they draw 35 gold in the center top this year. That's an amazing story. You know, it'd be great yeah. to have that guy. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of players on the front thing. You know, you talk about Cole Mann with Calgary Flame, 30 gold this year. Yeah. Paul Mary with the oh my God, 20 gold with a flame this year. 20 goals. Yeah, yeah. So um Matheson with Montreal. Yeah. Um we we'd be interesting about that for sure. What could have been there? again tomorrow night? We're going to be back with Marco. Uh, we're going to review the Western Conference at the Montreal Canadian visit Quebec North Zick in 1984, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't miss that show. We're going to give you a little bit news around the league. Of course, I'm going to definitely see the NHL. I'm going to show to you the, the, my NHL bracket uh, uh, at the end of the show. And then I'm going to finish this show, uh, Mr. Tap, to give us a bit what you're looking for. Overall, you think about a little bit longer. We talk about the first round tonight, right? But um, give me a little bit more. Tell me, who do you see at the end, Mr. Nata? It's it's hard to say because I think I think you have some excellent teams. I think um, when you're looking at the East, I could see a team like uh, Carolina going far, um, and I could see possibly the Rangers. So those two teams would be the heavy favorites for me. In the West, I really I really enjoyed Dallas play this year. Uh, I thought that they were very strong, and they have. A very deep team that can take him far. The only question mark there is can Ottinger bring his game to the next level that he needs to be at in the playoffs? He hasn't had a great season. So I would put uh, Winnipeg, or sorry, um, uh, Dallas, and maybe I want to see Edmonton go far. I, I just don't know if they'll. Go. It depends on the matchups after the first round, but. I'll stick with Edmonton and Dallas. Now the Chicago Blackhawks take the lead over the Kings, Mr. Natap. Yeah, the, I think the Kings will be the wild card. And October 11, I predict Edmonton versus Carolina, Mr. Natap, and the winner, Carolina. So I'm not sure in my mind. I will stuck with this. I stick with this. I know I could change. I can go with something else. Uh, but this is the, they are the two team, I believe. My underdog, it could be the Dallas Star. When I said underdog, like my team, I think they have a better chance to go all the way on that. Would be the Dallas Star, the son of tap on the Eastern Conference. Um, a hot chest again, the son of tap. The New York Rangers could surprise uh, the underside on that conference. But don't tell them, Mr. Tap, you can go to bed and you can take in about this because that's who you are. You are. 
awesome you are amazing you are the best and remember you have greatness inside of you and don't worry everybody if enough time change his mind in the next 48 hours uh, until then my friend uh, that, be, uh, okay. find a way not only dominate your day but find a way to dominate the first app of one minute enough tap we're 20 24. he did it again uh, the hockey nation has shown the ammunition want to tell you one more thing uh, we love you people an amazing great night uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. It's on a tap for all the people. Moderator, thanks so much. Alzi Calabro on the score update. And all the people, click on the like. We crossed the 50 likes tonight. So thanks so much, everybody. We are really grateful and thankful. Have a good night, Mr. Tap. See you next time. Good night, Coach. Good night, Hockey Nation. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Luke Marco. Have a good night, Patrick. Booyah!